So keyboard shortcuts in Microsoft Excel can make you a lot more efficient. I'm gonna show you the ones that are the most useful, but let me first say you don't have to remember all of these. The sample file has all of them in the shortcuts tab. And this sheet is printable and it includes all the Mac equivalents. So a link to the sample file is in the video description below. And it could be worthwhile to use this because it actually practicing these shortcuts can help you remember them. All right, so let's take a look at our data set. It includes a list of old cars and their features. So let me start first with a few basic shortcuts that are used across apps. You could use these inside and outside of Excel. Now, if you already know these, just hang in there. We'll go in a little bit deeper in just a second. We'll start with Control S, that's save. This is gonna be extremely important and I recommend you do this periodically so you don't lose your work. It's true that Excel sometimes auto saves, but we can't always trust that. So with Control S, if you haven't saved your file yet initially, the save dialog box is gonna pop up. I've already saved my file once, and so it's just saving for me in the background. Now let's go to Control P. That's gonna open up the print dialog box, which is gonna give me options to print the file and to make some adjustments before I do so, if that's needed. These next basic shortcuts, I think really go together, cut, copy, and paste. So if I select column H, I can use Control C to copy that column, and I'm gonna click on column I and use Control V to paste it. Now, if I actually wanna cut the information and paste it, I'll go back to column H, I'll use Control X for a cut, and then I'll go to column I and Control V to paste it. Cutting is actually gonna remove that. And at this point, because I wanna undo my changes, I'll introduce a new shortcut that gets used pretty often. So Control Z is gonna undo what I just did. Okay, I can use it even a few times to go back even further. Control Z is the undo. It's the, oh crap, I messed up, let me fix this. Now for the next few basic shortcuts, let's select the header row, row one. Okay, and Control B is gonna make things bold. Control I is gonna change text to italic. And Control U is gonna underline that text. Now that we've talked about a few basic shortcuts, let's talk about shortcuts for selecting data. And so the first one I wanna show you is Control A. When I hit Control A, it's gonna select my entire table, the one that I have currently selected. And let's actually join Control A with another shortcut we just talked about, Control C. I'm gonna use Control C to copy this table. And then I'm gonna go over to the copy worksheet and use Control V to paste it in. Now, similar to Control A for selecting the entire table, I can also select an entire column or an entire row. So let's click on the acceleration header here. And if I hit Control Space, it's gonna select this entire column, and I'm actually gonna change the number of decimal points just to test this out. I have the entire column selected, and I can make changes to all the cells inside of it. Now, if I wanted to select an entire row, I would just hit Shift and Space. Instead of Control Space for a column, I use Shift Space for selecting an entire row. Now let's talk about some shortcuts for navigating data. If I use Control Home, that's gonna take me to cell A1, the beginning of the worksheet. And then if I use Control End, that's gonna take me to the end of the worksheet. And it looks like it's moved a couple of columns over because I entered some information in there, but that's okay. If I hit Control Home, I go back. If I use Control End, I go to the end of my workbook. Now, similar to Home and End, if I use Control Page Down and Page Up, I can switch between worksheets. And also, if I wanna switch between open Excel workbooks, not worksheets, but workbooks, I can hit Control and Tab to switch between those. Now, another way to navigate data and find data is using Control F. That's gonna open up this Find and Replace dialog box, and maybe I wanna find all the cars that are Ford. So I type in Ford and hit either Find All or Find Next. Another option is that I could go to replace, and maybe I want to replace all the Fords with Toyotas. That'd be a way to do that. Now let's talk about some shortcuts for entering data to make our life easier as we do that. To demonstrate this first shortcut, I'm going to click on cell I2, 
and I'm going to start typing out a formula. And so I want to use average in this case. Maybe I want to take the average of the MPG or miles per gallon column. And as I start typing out average, I see that there's some recommendations pop up. If I use the tab shortcut, it auto completes the name of the function based on the function that's on the top of the list of recommendations. And to demonstrate this next shortcut, I'm going to go to this first car, the Chevrolet Malibu. I'm going to double click on it to get in this editing mode. And if I hit Alt and Enter, what it does is it returns a new row in that one cell. So maybe I'm going to say this car is a special edition. With that Alt Enter, it creates another row, a carriage return in my cell. Now, obviously, this wasn't all the shortcuts in Microsoft Excel. There's hundreds, but I focused on the ones that save time, get used often, and ones that you can actually remember. Now, as a reminder, there's a link to the sample file in the video description, and has all the shortcuts in that shortcuts tab. All right, good luck.